December of uh, this past year, JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, released an article that showed, and this is not a telemer-friendly journal, and is not a supplement-friendly journal, trust me. This is, this is White Coat Allopathic Medicine Journal. This is FDA Journal. They released an article that said 500% more cancer with short telomeres. And then they did quartiles. You know, who's, who's the highest telomere length, who's the lowest, who's in the middle? Direct line. Longer telomeres, less cancer. Shortest telomeres, 500% more cancer. And as you went up the line, the cancers got nastier and more deadly. Okay? Shortening of a telomeres causes aging, and in some cases, certain parts of your body will age faster, and they'll lose telomere length faster, and you will show up with a specific disease. But I promise you, as I told you before, it's a sign and symptom of aging. Lifestyles matter, folks. Okay? Lifestyles matter. The big four that I'm going to tell you about, nutrition plus supplementation, sleep, exercise, and meditation. They matter. They matter big time. They will slow down your telomere loss. They won't add length, but they'll get you closer to that, what we call the genetic hay flick limit of about 125 years, and they'll get you healthier there. You want to live longer. You want to live healthier. You want to have more of a guarantee to earn your telomerase. Once you lose telomere length, and here's the key point, folks. Somebody came to me and said, you know, I used to be 350 pounds, but now I'm 150 pounds. How long were you 350 pounds? 10 years. Okay, you shortened your telomeres at a very accelerated rate over those 10 years. You cannot get that back. You can't get it back. Those of you who come to me and said, I want TA65, I have cancer. Should I take what dose? Cancer is a disease of immune dysfunction. If you've got a cancer, you don't have an option. You need the highest dose. You need to turn on your telomerase because your immune system just told you it's screwed up. It missed something, and now you have cancer. And remember, I just told you that the JAMA article, well, me, JAMA said this, that, that cancer is a disease of short telomeres. All right. Once again, the difference between reducing loss and adding length is important. You manage the big three, you reduce the loss. There's only one way to add length. Somebody has heard this at least four times. How do you add length? What is the enzyme that turns on telomerase? I just gave the answer. Telomerase. It turns on. Oh, yeah. it, it, it adds length to your telomeres called telomerase. You even had it written down. Okay, good. What is the enzyme that improves your memory and my pronunciation? <laughs> telomerase. Okay. So that's how you make cells immortal. That's the only way to do it. Now, immortality is a scary thing, but would you settle for 120 of good, really health? You know, I would, although I'll probably be around longer. Lifestyle modifications, diet, and anything that reduces oxidative stress. Okay, remember the whole free radical thing? Remember that? Free radical? Hmm? Okay. Free radicals do damage. Oxidation is another word for free radical damage. There are four supplements that are really important. And again, I'm not saying these are the only things you should take. And I want you to understand, this is a telomere talk, so this is what research has shown is beneficial for preserving telomere length. They are fish oil, glutathione or N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor to glutathione, carnosine, not carnitine, carnitine is a great supplement, but carnosine has direct telomere action, and of course CoQ10, which people got so popular that when we released it a few weeks before this conference, it sold out. I don't have anybody, I don't have any to give you, I'm sorry. But CoQ10, most of you are familiar with that is. Exercise. Now most exercise and telomere studies are done by exercise physiologists. Show of hands. Or let, me, let me ask you a question, may I? You. Yeah, I'm gonna you. <laughs> How many you know what exercise physiologists are? No. Okay. Who knows what an exercise physiologist is? Uh, somebody who studies exercise. Okay. Over there. You, are you one? No, but you know what, what you're studying. Okay. Okay. What, do you, what kind of activity do you do? Because most exercise physiologists are active. Aerobic. Aerobic. All exercise physiologists are aerobes. They're all long, slow distance runners and cyclists. Now, I, I run ultra marathons. You heard that. So I'm one of them. But... It is a bias. So most of the studies have been done on running. There's not you know, a lot of mixed martial arts and exercise physiology. There's not a lot of power lifters. But what they showed was in a very high caliber of runners who continued to run after college for 20 years and were 45 years old, they had the telomere length of about 25 or 30. 
And they also found that all 25-year-olds had a reasonably good telomere length. And somebody asked me, when should you start TA65? We used to say 40. Now I say 25 to 30 is a good time to start before things start going downhill. But the bottom line is, is that if you do the right kinds of exercises, in our book, The Immortality Edge, we give specifics. And we talk about high-intensity interval training. Who knows what high-intensity interval training is? Lots of you. Some of you. Who practices high-intensity interval training? Lots of you. Works, doesn't it? Works well, right? Nine times as much fat, VO2 max goes up, and it's fast. Is it better than long, slow distance? For some things, absolutely. Is it better than long, slow distance for burning fat? Somebody screamed yes. Yes, okay. Now, everything swings in medicine, so be prepared for the resurgence of long, slow distance, okay. If you have all day and nothing to do, and you can do what I do sometimes, which I don't have all day most days, but some days I go out and run 20 or 30 miles for my kicks, right. So these kinds of things, if done properly, can add or can slow down the loss of your telomeres. So exercise. If you're not exercising, you're broken, folks. You got to exercise. You got to do something. If you can't do high intensity interval training and sprints or, or cycles, get in the deep water by yourself in an expensive ski vest, you know, a water ski vest. I almost said weight vest one time. <laughs> don't buy a weight vest. Don't get in the pool with a weight vest on. Use the, use the vest that <laughs> keeps you floating and do your thing. Now, you will lose the benefits of weight bearing, but you can walk and not traumatize your joints. Sleep, massively underestimated as an anti-aging tool. Nobody sleeps enough. Nobody has studied sleep. There's not one study on telomere length and sleep. So I'm going to look like a rocket scientist here and predict. They'll do a study and they'll show <laughs> lack of sleep shortens telomeres. Sleep apnea certainly shortens telomeres. Now, why will I say this? Because sleep essentially behaves like an infection. If you don't sleep, your body behaves like it has an infection. It behaves just like it does when you eat poorly. It behaves just like it does when you are too heavy. It gets inflamed. It releases nonspecific global inflammatory cells in your body, and you are the target, and your telomeres are the target. Meditation mindfulness. Elizabeth Blackburn, the Nobel Prize winner that I showed you, is doing lots of research that shows that meditation, specifically mindfulness meditation, is very effective at slowing telomere loss. And most of these retreats are, uh, most of the study places she works at are Buddhist retreats. So those of you who are Buddhists understand this very well. Those of you who don't, it's in our book. Very simple, easy practices that you can do for meditation. Other, uh, people ask me about prayer. I don't know. I, I would like to say yes, but I don't know that, so I'm not going to lie. It makes sense, but I don't know. All right, number one thing you can do is fix your omega-3 ratios. There's no other answer to that question, okay? It's the number one thing that everybody can do. Now, yes, I would love for you all to get on TA-65, but at a six-month cost of between $1,200 and $4,000, some of you are not going to do that. But most of you who are not raw food vegans can take fish oil. Raw food vegans ask me what you should do because there is something you should do and it's not flax and not, it's not algae and I'll show you why. And you can check your levels. Like I said, we have only 60 of these finger stick tests. But especially you vegetarians and vegans and any of you folks who have diseases and illnesses of inflammation, autoimmune diseases and cancers, you'll definitely want to check. It's simple. And why wouldn't you? But you also have to be prepared to do something about it. All right, this is a slide by that lady, Artemis Samopoulos, I showed you. Basically, this is what happens when you have high omega-6 and low omega-3s. The USA, as you can see, is way off the chart in the unhealthy range. And the Greenland Eskimos are down there. They just did another study on Eskimos, different uh, breed or different clan of Eskimos. I call it the Chubby Eskimo Study because what they did was they found these people, they eat 20 times the amount of omega-3s that most people eat in this country. Most people eat about 300 milligrams a day. These people eat 20 times that, okay, which turns out to be somewhere, I think, around 6 grams minimum, which is what I recommend for most people anyway. And they were, you know, 50 pounds overweight. Their LDL or bad cholesterols were 250 or 260. That's statin territory where I come from, okay? Their HDLs were pretty good. Their inflammatory markers were great. They had extremely low cancer, extremely low heart disease. And they were fat. They weren't diabetic. They didn't get that much cancer. They got very little heart disease, okay? 
Now, they didn't do a longevity study on them, but I bet they probably outlived most of us by at least a couple years. Here's the problem. Vegans and vegetarians, especially vulnerable to low omega-3. I didn't actually, I, I stole that, okay? I stole it, for, it's an article title that was recently released. Because lately, people are beginning to understand that plant-based and fruit-based diets, especially, and nut-based diets, often carry with them a lot of omega-6. Here's the problem. Omega-6 and omega-3 use the same pathways. And the omega-6s outcompete the omega-3s. So the more omega-6s you have, by the rule, the less omega-3s you have. How much omega-3 is in spinach? Five times less than the omega-6. How much omega-3 is in strawberries and apples? Five times less. How much omega-3, where's David? Is David still here? <laughs> Mr. Avocado. <laughs> the avocado has 3,400 milligrams of omega-6 and 300 milligrams of omega-3, whopping. Now, why don't you die from eating avocados, and why does David tell you it's healthy? Because guess what? There's a lot of other good stuff in there that mitigates against the problems. So, there is a problem with this headline that they released. Compared to who and what, what are they talking about? Most vegans and vegetarians have at least half the risk of heart disease. So you're much better than a typical Western diet, much better. But the point that's being made is that there's a hole in this diet that probably needs to be fixed. The other thing is that most plants that have omega-3s, and a couple good ones are the dinosaur kale and mustard leaves, the, broad, the big broad leaf stuff, they're about one to one, but they're 18 carbons and they need to be converted. And on that sort of middle pathway, which let me come over here now so that I can be equal to everybody, um, this pathway here shows the steps that have to happen. Right in through here, 25% of the population can't do this very well, and the rest can only do it 5%. So what that translates into, say you want to use flax oil, okay? That means to make six grams of EPA here, and DHA, which are the critical components, I could just call it fish oil, because that's where all the studies come from, folks. Uh, you need 120 grams of flax oil, not flax seed, flax oil. Anybody ever eat 120 grams of flax oil? <laughs> Bring your toilet paper. <laughs> All right, backwards. Some of you are really smart and you're taking algal products. I'll oh, show that guy, I'm gonna take an algae. Algae has 400 milligrams of DHA, 20 milligrams of EPA. The ratio that you should have is three to two, 300 milligrams of EPA to 200 of DHA. And you cannot back convert. That's what that dotted line says. That's a theoretical conversion. You can't take DHA and make it back to EPA. It doesn't happen. So when it comes up about what you're supposed to do to get your EPA and DHA, just bring that up in the q and I've spent a lot of time on fish oil because I love it, and it cured me. Here's an interesting slide. I'm going to make this one really short and sweet. I compared my fish oil to krill. I sent it to an independent lab, and I, I didn't tell them what they were testing, okay, until after the tests. I didn't say whose it was or what it was. I'm not going to say now, except the yellow is mine.